Hi, I'm Josh at the Journey Church. We're making our way through Romans Disarmed in order to liberate Paul's letter and our communities in the face of structural oppression. Chapter 7 is Welcoming the Powerless. The chapter is really about the response of the church to the economic oppression discussed in the last chapter. And for Paul, that means it's about food. Where there's injustice, people go hungry. Where there is justice, people are fed. But it's also about finding community around the table. Hierarchy, exclusion and abuse were all played out in the imperialist home come dinner time. And if the church is to be a counter culture to empire, it has to start here. This is not a place for judgmentalism, shame or exclusion. Paul is actively seeking to include those of lower socioeconomic status. Such inclusivity brings with it variety and the different expressions of culture and belief are not to be met with a response of contempt or judgment. All should be able to stand securely within the community on the basis of grace. Furthermore, what is sometimes translated in chapter 15 as the strong should put up with the failings of the weak, the authors say is better translated as we who are powerful ought to bear the weakness of the powerless and not please ourselves. As in those who are socioeconomically powerful should be identifying with, sharing with and actively supporting the poorest. In Greco-Roman culture, the weak are forced to submit to the strong. In the upside down kingdom of God, the strong should be bearing the weakness of the powerless. Indeed, one of the clear indications that was given that the gospel had been proclaimed with the power of the Holy Spirit is that the Gentiles had been pleased to share their resources with the poor among the saints in Jerusalem. Now, while the church has veered towards a preoccupation with the justification of the sinner, it has lost the message that when Paul talks about justification, he is talking about how God has made it possible for human beings to do justice. This diversion matters because beyond such personal purity issues, the system upon which many of our lives are built, if we admit it, depend on bowing the knee to a fundamentally idolatrous system. So what's the solution? Well, the authors describe an economy of care. An expanding economy requires placelessness, home-destroying carelessness of empire. In contrast, we need an economy that knows its place respects the limits of its place and works towards the regenerative health of the place and its people. Randy Woodley describes this in indigenous terms as the harmony way. An economy of care prioritises people over products and profits. An economy of enough over an insatiable economy of more. Paul's priorities of generosity and hospitality are akin to those practiced by indigenous communities before colonisation. Rituals of redistribution were so threatening to colonial narratives that they were outlawed, but are still practiced by many indigenous peoples today. In fact, outside of state systems, gift economies have been quite common. To take Paul's created vision of just economics seriously means nothing less than a paradigm shift. Propriety and frugality over self-indulgent consumption, local emplaced economics rather than rapacious global capitalism. Instead of an economy of high finance with money making money, this is real people caring, maintaining and producing what is needed with each other and for each other. An economy of care cannot be negligent over how the stuff it uses is produced, cannot be ignorant of how savings, funds and pensions are invested. It must be bold to learn more of the reality of its material existence and act on the knowledge that it gains. Of course, the more we actually depend upon a community to serve and support one another, the less dependent we will feel the need to be on money and the coercive global markets upon which it is spent. 
The authors then offer a case for the kinds of changes needed in wider society that we need to be calling for, and I will share a summary of those in a Word doc.